What's up guys, Twitchy here and welcome to the first part of the Arc Server Manager videos I'm doing on YouTube. Today's section is going to be based on your prerequisites, your system requirements, your port forwarding, your Windows firewall rules, where you can get Arc Server Manager and how you get it set up to start using it on your system. If you don't need this part, please feel free to skip ahead to other parts in the video series. But if you do need this part, hold on tight because we're getting into it. Okay, so let's talk about system requirements and the lack of information on system requirements. There's a couple of places you can find some things about it. Nothing's very specific. I think that's because there are so many different ways of doing ARC servers as far as uh, custom maps and mods and you know this, that, or the other. I can tell you for sure that if, if you've only got a couple of people joining your server and you're not running any mods, then this six gigabytes of RAM that you can find on the fandom site is generally okay. Everything you add to the server, though, beyond that, you're going to want to dedicate RAM to. So you figure if you're doing mods, if you have a, um, the center map, if you have 15, 20 people joining your server, all of these things, they're going to add into the system requirements. I found another site that stated 8 gigs of RAM uh, for the server, 20 gig minimum disk space, which I'm going to tell you right now, just plan big and, and be safe. They're saying it's dual core processor of 3.0 gigahertz or higher which you know they're saying for 10 to 15 players at this point most of us have better processors than that so you should be okay but if you are on an old dual core system or an old i3 processor you know you're just going to have to experiment around with it uh, that you're also looking at uh, for windows machines a 64-bit operating system i've ran it on everything from windows 7 all the way up to uh server 2019 and this is windows 10 i'm going to be doing it on windows 11 eventually so you should be fine on any windows 64-bit operating system and the last thing this site of course is saying is a reliable internet connection now what i will tell you about your internet connection is if you're on dsl this might be a miserable experience for you um, if you have less than like five gigs upload speed six gigs upload speed this might be a bit rough okay so your upload speeds are going to be very important in this situation and your overall network health is going to be important let's look at prerequisites here microsoft visual c 2013 and direct x from june 2010 are required to have on your machine in order to play arc um, but also is required to have on the machine in order to run the arc server so if you guys are putting this on a machine that you've already had Arc installed on, you're fine. However, if you're not, then you'll need to get those two packages and install them onto your server. Now, there is a place that you can find both of these packages um, located inside of your Steam directory. So if you go into your Steam directory and look, there's a DirectX folder and a um, VC redistributable folder okay so that's DirectX and that's Visual C++ inside of your DirectX you see the June 2010 folder install you can put that on a thumb drive move it to your server or move it over the network same way with the 2013 Visual C++ just either install it over the network or put it on a thumb drive and install it on your local machine you install those two packages you'll be fine if you forget to do it don't worry it's gonna tell you it'll let you know all right. Okay, now that we got the prerequisites out of the way, let's go get Arc Server Manager. So we're going to go into their freeform site, arcservermanager.freeforms.net. We're going to go down to release information. We're going to go to downloads, and you're going to download the latest zip file right there under installers. I've already done that, so I'm just going to minimize this screen, and we are going to pull this up. I'm just going to extract this entire zip file to latest. And that should be done. I like to rename it just so I have an idea of what it is. We're gonna rename this to Arc. Whoa, Jesus Christ, learn how to type. Arc Server Manage. You, Jesus, my fingers today, boys uh, and girls, ladies and gents, kids of all ages. We're going to open that up and we're going to go ahead 
and double click on Arc Server Manager. All right, so the first time you run that Arc Server Manager EXE, you're gonna need to give it admin rights. You're gonna have to, you know, basically comfort it at night because it's lonely. But it's gonna open up this data folder selection. And this is just where you're gonna save all of your Arc Server Manager data. It names it ASM data, or yeah, ASM data. I particularly don't care for that. So I'm gonna name it Arc Server Manager. Yeah, we're gonna name it that. And I also like to have it saved in on a separate drive away from my main OS. So I have a save data drive. We're gonna pick that, I'm gonna click OK. It's basically saying that this is where it's gonna store its CMD stuff. Great, that's fine. And that's where it's gonna store its profiles. Wonderful. Uh, data folder has been set. You must now restart the server manager to use the new settings. Okay. It's very helpful. Now it could auto restart and that would be nice, but it didn't. So we're gonna go ahead and say, yes, I'm an administrator again. And yes, this is okay. It's just a process guys, honestly. So now it's going to be downloading the Steam CND. We'll cut when this is done. We'll come back for the next piece. Okay, so once that's done running, we get to this screen, it's opened up. Congratulations, you have Arc Server Manager. We're gonna full screen this. Uh, at the top here, it says my public IP. I've just zeroed that out just because you guys don't really need to know my public IP. Um, but when you're running your own servers, that's kind of nice to have up there because that's what you'll give your friends if they wanna add it to their Steam favorites. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna click the plus sign. And that is going to open up Arc Server Manager. And that is amazing. Okay, so now that we have Arc Server Manager open and we've hit the little plus sign, we're inside of a profile. So let's go ahead and name our profile. Every time you do something or make a change, I suggest hitting that save button. I'm just saying, I've made mistakes in the past. I know how it goes, all right? And what do we see here? We see install location. The install location, S, Arc Server Manager, Server, Server 1. Now, I hate that personally, so I'm gonna go into the little set location button here, and instead of Server 1, I like to name this folder what the, what the server is. Uh, so this is Twitchies. Now, if I was doing a cluster at this point in time, I would probably name this Twitchy's Island, Twitchy's Ragnarok, Twitchy's, you know, whatever map you're doing. Just so you know, as soon as you get into your files, you know exactly what it is and kind of go from there. So now that's set and you see that um, we're going to save that out. That did set, didn't it? All right, we're going to select that folder select folder and now you can see that the install location has changed to twitchy's test server okay now that we have that taken care of i wouldn't do anything else here until the other settings are completed at least a few of the other settings are completed um so we're gonna leave this here where it's at for right now part two will come in and we'll do some of the administration work and um keep going from there but now that that's done there's a couple other things we need to talk about in this video. The first thing we're going to talk about in this video is port forwarding. Okay, because without port forwarding or Windows firewall rules, having Arc Server Manager downloaded on your computer isn't going to help you any. So let's go ahead and look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize out of this. All right, guys, so with port forwarding, if you're familiar with port forwarding and you know what you're doing, you're comfortable in your router, go ahead and port forward your game port and your query port. Um, using both TCP and UDP protocols. If your router has a both, you guys know you can use the both button and everything's good to go and you should be solid. For those of you who aren't comfortable with port forwarding, there's a very helpful site out there called portforward.com. Um, in portforward.com, you can go and get a list of routers. In the list of routers, you can actually look for your specific router. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and say that I personally own a mm. 
we're just gonna say I own a Netgear. Right? I don't. But we're just gonna say I do. We can come in here into the Netgears and let's just say that my Netgear is that model. And for that model of Netgear, it's gonna tell you how to do this. Right? So whatever your router's IP address is, if you've never set up your router to have a default username and password or something other than the default username and password, it will tell you what that is. Come down, then it'll tell you exactly where to go inside of your router with beautiful little screenshots. And it'll tell you how to get in and actually do the port forwarding on your router. Now, this is actually probably the perfect example of of something because some routers don't have a both option right this one right here if you look down at the bottom it says both and you'll see that that's great um, for anyone who has a both option that means you'll only have to make two different entries in your router in order to get your port forwarding set up but for those of you who do not have a both option inside of your router you will need to set UDP and TCP for each port. So assuming that you're using the default 7777, you would need that done in UDP and you would need that done in TCP, okay? Um, same way with your 27015, if you're using that as your de default query port, you would need to do TCP and UDP. So you'll have four entries in there one for each protocol for those of you who have both you guys have it easy you just have to make two entries okay so that's the general basics of port forwarding if you guys need any help with port forwarding you feel free to ask questions um, I'll try to get get to you and I'll try to help you out as best I can now that we've talked about that we have to talk about the other beast in the room and that is the Windows firewall both of these parts are extremely important. I'm going to reiterate that, and I know you guys probably don't need me to, but I'm going to reiterate the fact that Windows firewall rules and port forwarding are probably the two most important pieces to this puzzle because without both of them working, you are not going to be able to access your servers. I would say back in my 2016 and 2017 videos, at least 75% of the questions that I got all came down to port forwarding or Windows firewall rules. So in this case, what we're looking to do is the same thing we did in the port forwarding. We want both UDP and TCP rules for our network port and our query port. I have a batch file that I'm going to use in order to enter these. I'll show you guys what that is. If you want to use something like that, it's perfectly fine to do. If not, I will also show you how to make a role manually. Okay. But honestly, automate everything you can for these if you're going to be doing management, server management, just because it makes your life a lot easier in the long run. But either way, uh, you can see right now that the only ARC stuff that I have is the basic game stuff. All right, it's no server stuff. It's UDP, TCP, but its port is not very specific. We're going to actually go in and I'm going to run this as administrator. It's going to run its little happy dance. We're going to come back down into here. And now if we refresh this screen, which uh, you can do by hitting F5, you can see I now have Arc Server Game TCP, Arc Server Game UDP, Arc Server Query TCP, and Arc Server Query UDP. And these are using the default 7777 and 27015. Let me go ahead and show you the commands for that. If you guys decide that you want to use it, like I said, you're more than welcome to. I'll probably try to do... Um, cancel, man. Just, just cancel. Nobody wants you. I'll probably try to do like a paste bin or something for these but you can see it's just a, a net sh command net sh advanced firewall firewall add role name equals you can edit this part right here to be whatever you want arc server game tcp is what i called it so when i go into my firewall i know exactly what i'm looking at 
um, and it basically puts that in the TCP and the port number okay it's real simple like I said I'll try to put a paste bin up but let's say you're running multiple servers you would just copy and paste these out and you would change the names and the ports and then you could just run it one time and be done um, so if you're running massive like clusters and stuff like that uh, this can be very very helpful and pretty pretty uh, pretty decent for saving time all right all right so now that we're out of that let's go back into the firewall and I'll just show you how to enter one manually manually you want to right click it you want to do new rule you're going to pick a port you're going to click next you're going to pick that it's TCP or UDP whichever one you need um, you're going to add the specific port in this case I'm going to do it because 7778 like I'm adding a new server on top of what I already have um, you're going to allow the connection you're going to next that stuff you're going to name it arc server and I'm going to put the island right just so I know just so I know and I'm going to finish that out so now you can see here I have arc server the island and it is TCP it's 7778 now if I right click this if I want to do the next one I can actually copy it and paste it and then I can go in and I can edit it and under protocols I can just drop that down to UDP and I can apply it now both my UDP and my TCP are done for that server all right well I mean I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to get done in the first video I'll try to put links in the description for everything that I have and I will try to timestamp the videos from here on out um, into the important bits and places and we'll kind of go from there I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful and I'll see you next time